In October 1881, a 30-second shootout took place between some off-duty lawmen and a gang of outlaws in Tombstone, Arizona. Despite having very little historical significance whatsoever, an event that was over faster than an unwanted child's conception has since become part of the legend of the Wild West. Here are three movies that revolve around that event. Tombstone, Wyatt Earp, and The Gunfight at the OK Corral. In real life, the gunfight at the OK Corral took less time than a single TV commercial advertising the movie The Gunfight at the OK Corral. Look, are you going to do that every single time? Yep. You are? Definitely. Oh, OK. It's been told and retold in books, movies and television more times than pretty much any other story of the Wild West. It's even been told in non-Western genres like Star Trek and Doctor Who. Why don't you get off that pulpit, Wyatt? Ellsworth, Wichita, Dodge City, and what have they got you but a life full of misery and a woman who walked out on you and the friendship of a killer. The gunfight was basically a personal vendetta after long simmering tensions between the Clanton gang, or cowboys, and the Earp family, along with their coughing friend Doc Holliday, most of whom were serving as US Marshals or deputies. There was a shootout in town, the gunfight thing we're banging on about here, and some additional incidents later. So really, it's several gunfights in, around, and sometimes quite far away from the OK Corral. Like how only a very small portion of the movie Saturday Night Fever is actually set on a Saturday night. I'm not looking for a fight, but you gotta stop pushing me. Now why don't we sit down and talk it over? I'll make you any kind of deal you ask. The only deal I want is for you to run that stolen herd back to Mexico. The story only took on a cultural significance after a biography of Wyatt Earp was published in the 30s, which led to one of the earliest film depictions of the gunfight, dot dot dot, My Darling Clementine, a 1946 film directed by John Ford, which is possibly the single biggest reason that that bloody song still crops up in westerns. I mean, as a movie title, My Darling Clementine doesn't allude to the fact there's a famous gun battle in it. It would be like if James Cameron had named his 1997 film about an ocean liner making its maiden voyage after its title song, My Heart Will Go On. A decade later, someone with a basic grasp of film marketing decided that a film about the gunfight at the OK Corral should be called Gunfight at OK. The film had some heavy hitters in the cast, with Burt Lancaster as lawman Wyatt Earp, portrayed here as a straight shooter in every way. His offsider is Kirk Douglas as rogue dentist Doc Holliday. Yes, he was an actual dentist, there's even mention of him going to dentist school, as well as him being a fantastic gambler and gunman, which is the kind of combination you want in anyone offering you orthodontic services. There's none of this adding 15 titles to your LinkedIn profile and hoping somebody will offer you work in one of the more glamorous imaginary job titles you give yourself. Earp and Holiday have an antipathy with each other for the early part of the film, but that quickly seems to disappear, almost off camera, and the two are best buds by the middle of the film. So a 30 second event stretched to two hours obviously involves some embellishment. I say my men are good enough to dance with your women. But fear not, the bulk of the film details the lead up to the soon to be famous event. Basically it's cowboys having beef with each other, and since the only way to broadcast a diss track was over a telegraph. One cowboy takes offence at this and tries to kill this guy who takes offence at that while someone else cracks the shits about some other perceived slight. Doc Holliday is one of those people who seems to rub everyone the wrong way. Sure is a lot of beef coming in here. His girlfriend Kathy leaves him and shacks up with his mortal enemy, Johnny Ringo. That's one awkward Thanksgiving. The Earp brothers basically have bad blood with the Clantons, and this turns nasty, culminating in the aforementioned battle at the OK Corral. Though the battle is depicted in the film as somewhat longer and in a larger physical space than the original event. If implying something was bigger than it was in reality was a crime, then we'd all be doing time. But I do have the biggest collection of antique Playmobil. I must go to Tombstone. I go clean up Tombstone. There's a hundred more tombstones on the frontier, all waiting for the great Wyatt Earp. The rest of the cast is fairly ordinary, with no one coming close to overshadowing the superstars headlining the film. But there's Lee Van Cleef a decade before he starred in the slew of spaghetti westerns, there's DeForest Kelly before he appeared in Star Trek, and a young Dennis Hopper as one of the outlaw brothers that Earp is unsuccessful in persuading to keep out of the conflagration in or near the OK Corral. That's just a weird way of saying, the gunfight at the OK Corral.
The film was one of prolific director John Sturges' biggest successes, and of course he would go on to direct greats like The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape, among others. Lancaster and Douglas were already huge stars by this point and would remain in demand for years to come, working together on a number of films. One memorable element of the film is the score by Dmitry Tyomkin, much of which is dominated by Frankie Lane's famous song narrating the action. The killers that died in the gunfight at OK Corral. <laughs> Gunfight is an okay film rather than a great one, but its enduring success helped popularise a minor historical event into something that people would just not shut the hell up about. In the 60s, American westerns petered out. Italian westerns took over with their violence and lashings of ragu taking over the genre for a spell, before American westerns morphed into what is known as American revisionist westerns, which were either more violent or introspective than earlier US westerns, and in many cases, both. In the 1990s, a rash of cool westerns hit cinemas. Some attempted to be grittier or sexier. When they weren't over the top and silly, they tried to remain somewhat grounded. Only a very few tried to tell a story based on actual historical events or characters. But for whatever reason, two separate movies released a year apart in the 90s retold The Gunfight at the OK Corral. 1993's Tombstone goes a little bigger in its depiction of the gunfight at the OK Corral. Kurt Russell starred as Wyatt Earp, with Val Kilmer as a particularly larger than life Doc Holliday, coughing and spluttering as is his wont. No face mask, and he's already drunk on the town's entire supply of hand sanitizer. This Doc Holliday is a psycho. He's the guy who visits his grandparents when he has a cold, the guy who insists on shaking your hand, and the guy who still insists on paying cash for everything. Come on. Come on. <coughs> Come on! The film is credited to veteran director George Pan Cosmatos, who took over from writer Kevin Jarre during production, but many believe Kurt Russell was the real director in all but name. All those years I worked those cow towns, I was only ever mixed up in one shooting, just one. But a man lost his life and I took it. You don't know how that feels, Morton. The story is more or less the same, except here the ranks of the Clanton Gang, also known as Cowboys, have swollen to an enormous army. With so many different takes on the same material, it kind of gets hard to pass who is who in which version. No, I'm sure of it. I hate him. He's drunk. Tombstone is a slightly stylized take on the material. Tombstone also loosens up Earp a lot where he's less of a paragon of virtue than we see in other portrayals. Here, Earp has an addict wife. Wyatt, I couldn't find a single store that had laudanum That's anywhere. Right. And he's seeing an actress on the side. He and his family are part-time lawmen and have a number of business interests in the town, such as gambling. Russell makes a good Earp in a film that tries to meld some of the sensibilities of contemporary action films with that of classic westerns. You're probably seeing double. I have two guns, one for each of you. Kilmer goes large with the role. Some might call it showboating, others hideously overacting. Oops. But he's definitely in control of the viewer's attention in any scene featuring Holiday. We started a game we never got to finish. <coughs> Play for blood, remember? The rest of the film is well cast, with Sam Elliott and Bill Paxton as Earp's brothers, squaring off against Michael Bean, Thomas Hayden Church, and most memorably, Powers Booth. Did you go to hell? You first. <laughs> Dana Delaney tries to balance the high levels of manliness on display, but the women tend to get lost in the action in a film like this. There are also familiar faces like Stephen Lang and Billy Bob Thornton scattered throughout the film. Is that a fact? Tombstone has gathered a lot of fans over the years. I, I don't necessarily count myself as one of them. People can change, Doc. I'll remember you said that. It's an entertaining enough film and quite stylish in its execution, but it's okay rather than a great film. We're not done yet with Tombstone, since we also need to talk about Lawrence Kasdan's 1994 Wyatt Earp, which is half a Wyatt Earp biography and half about the gunfight at the... Hang on, let me just check my notes. OK Corral. The only thing that's happened between us is I got popped good. I don't want to make a fight. Stop talking. Kevin Costner, who only a few years earlier had had a huge critical and financial success with his Dances with Wolves, stars as Wyatt Earp, from a not too convincing young age to a slightly more convincing middle age. Shut up. 
Young Earp is studying to be a lawyer while working as a cop, but his first wife dies and Earp goes off the rails and becomes a drunken mugger, then a trapper where he meets another soon to be famous western hero Bat Masterson. He eventually becomes a lawman along with his brothers Morgan and Virgil and of course meets up with gunslinging dentist and gambler Doc Holliday. Here played slightly less flamboyantly by Dennis Quaid. And actually I think I prefer Quaid's Holiday. All of you can kiss my rebel dick. The film is a long one, not a terrible one, but not necessarily anything fantastic. It tries to be a little more grounded and imbue Earp's character with more depth than any other version of the gunfight at the OK Corral. Oh come on, give it a rest, Frank. It also doesn't really make you think Earp is anything less than a total dickhead. Really, he's just a completely grumpy dickhead. When his first wife dies, you feel relief for her. And when his second wife is at death's door, you care about as much as you would about Skylar White breaking a fingernail. The rest of the cast is good, with Michael Madsen, Gene Hackman, Jim Caviezel, Tom Sizemore, Joe Beth Williams, Isabella Rossellini. You can call me Big Nose Kate. Everybody else does. It's not that big. All kinds of reasons a person gets a name. Annabeth Gish, Catherine O'Hara, Mayor Winningham, Jeff Fay. But it's just a film that lives or dies by its erp. Kevin Costner. Kevin! Kevin Costner is, eh, just acceptable just barely adequate. The earnest Earp in the first half is replaced by grumpy and patient Earp in the second half, and neither version is all that compelling to watch. About sums you up, doesn't it? What's on your mind? Gossip time, Costner was originally involved in Tombstone, but left the production because the film wasn't solely about his character. He's horseshit. And then he got involved with what was then to be a six hour miniseries bio on Earp being made by Lawrence Kasdan. In getting this turned into a feature film, he used his then considerable industry influence to harass Tombstone's release in various ways. So nefarious. I have forsworn myself. I have broken every law I swore to defend. I have become what I beheld and I am content that I have done right. In the end, Tombstone was the more successful film financially and has become more and more popular over the years. Whereas Wyatt Earp is just some film Netflix wants you to watch if they don't have Tombstone. I don't mind Wyatt Earp despite its flaws. It's adequate at best though, with Costner being easily the weakest link. Both of the 90s movies show the true end of the conflict, with two Earp brothers being attacked after the gunfight, with Wyatt and Holiday tracking down the last of the Clanton gang far from town, rather than in Tombstone. So run, you curse! Uh, run! Tell all the other curs the lie's coming! And they both allow us epilogues. Tombstone shows us Earp visiting Doc in hospital, while Wyatt Earp flashes forward to a much older Earp with his third wife. All these films have strengths and weaknesses in storytelling and acting, but all are reasonably well made and offer entertainment value. Wyatt Earp is also really long compared to the other two and outstays its welcome like Auntie Beryl's fruitcake in January. On balance, I guess I prefer the 1957 film out of these three. It at least has the goofy song. Kurt Russell's probably the better Earp, though the other Earp brothers are mostly nondescript in all three films. Ike Clanton, Curly Bill and Johnny Ringo are all over the shop. No one film has the definitive portrayal of all the characters. Maybe somebody will cut together a version that it has the definitive performances into one supercut. But I suppose the real question is, which of these films has the best coughing fit caused by Doc Holliday's tuberculosis? Kirk Douglas, Val Kilmer or Dennis Quaid? So an historical event that was more interesting than earth shattering in its importance has become a Hollywood staple that keeps getting made and remade because people really like this shit. Well, bye. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below and check out some of our other videos that are not about the gunfight at the OK Corral. Damn it!